everybody and welcome to Scuba Diving Magazine and welcome to the Dive Brief where I delve a little bit deeper into a topic or an incident to highlight learning points to help raise awareness and promote safer practices in the water. This video is somewhat of a part two. Uh, it is a standalone video but it's kind of a part two, a follow-up video to a previous video that focused on a study on snorkeling deaths in Hawaii that looked at snorkel designs that could be a contributing factor. If you haven't seen it yet then there's going to be a link that's just popped up here and that will be down in the description below as well. One part of that study briefly looked at full face snorkel masks which have had a rocky track record since they were introduced a few years back and because that study didn't go into huge depths, if you pardon the pun, into full face snorkel masks, I decided to search around for any studies into full face snorkel masks themselves and sure enough there was a study conducted by Duke University in collaboration with the Divers Alert Network or DAN from 2021. As there are a lot of theories about the function and effects of full face snorkel masks with CO2 levels and designs that researchers really wanted to analyze to see if they could scientifically prove if those theories were correct or not. 10 participants took part in this trial and the subjects were specifically non-scuba divers because they wanted people who had little to no experience with diving masks and how to wear them properly. They wanted subjects to represent a novice snorkeler just buying gear online and going on holiday and using that full face snorkel. Participants had to be over 18 and they were separated into two groups. Group A was anybody over 18 uh, that was safe to perform light activity but group A they kind of wanted to have subjects over 35 as much as possible. Each participant went through a screening day before the actual study to ensure that they could safely perform that light activity and they were also screened for cardiovascular disease just to make sure. Group B went through the same screening tests um, however they were aged between 18 and 40 strictly they had to be non-smokers as well and they would be given a higher work rate target compared to group a group a was a bit more relaxed at their own pace whereas group b had to sort of hit certain targets the test itself was relatively simple Duke has a water tank inside of a chamber called Foxtrot Chamber at the Duke Center for Hyperbaric Medicine and Environmental Physiology. Inside the warm water, because they did warm it up for them, was an exercise bike. And subjects would pedal on the bike whilst breathing from a range of slightly modified full face snorkel masks that the researchers had purchased from a range of manufacturers from big name brands as well as just shopping online and purchasing the cheapest full face snorkel mask that they could find on Amazon to replicate potential shopping habits of people just going online, just searching for full face snorkel mask filtered by price and just buying the cheapest ones. Four of the masks that they used in the test were made by dive manufacturers and three of the masks were the lowest price mask of Amazon as well as a conventional snorkel and a, a half mask as a bit of a control group. Each mask was slightly modified at, uh, at first to allow sensors to be fitted to the front of each mask to monitor carbon dioxide levels, oxygen levels, as well as breathing resistance. And then a thin pressure sensor was used around the seal where it touches the, uh, the subject's face to check how tightly participants would tighten the mask onto their face. For each full face snorkel mask test, the test subject was asked to place the mask on themselves but provided no further instructions so that participants would put the mask on as an average novice would. The testing was designed to assess the function of the full face snorkel masks produced by multiple brands compared to each other as well as compared to a conventional snorkel. Test subjects were positioned horizontally in that warm water. They were face down on the bicycle ergometer, grasping the handlebars for stability. On each test day, each subject would undergo three test procedures using first a conventional snorkel and then two different brands of full face snorkel mask whilst pedaling the underwater bicycle. Group A were asked to pedal at a rate that is comfortable for them, whilst Group B was given a higher target work rate to achieve to uh, basically simulate swimming against a current. 
The subjects were also instructed that they would be asked to remove the masks as quickly as possible in response to an audible or a visual alarm to test how quickly they could remove the mask by themselves. After the test, all of the masks were disassembled so that the valves could all be analyzed for function and their effect on airflow because they're basically choke points in that breathing apparatus and one-way valves are supposed to control that airflow direction. These tests were all to analyze three theories of malfunction as to why full face snorkels could possibly lead to snorkeling issues and even fatalities. The first being inadequate gas circulation. So the carbon dioxide buildup hypothesis, that was why the sensors were built into the mask to monitor gas concentrations. Difficulty removing the mask as well, which is what the pressure sensors and the timed mask removal test was there for, and poor gas flow through the device that could lead to an increase in work of breathing and respiratory distress by looking at each of the individual valves. So what did they find? For the first theory, that uh, inadequate gas circulation could lead to high carbon dioxide levels and low oxygen levels in the mask. While the results did show a range of levels in both inspired and expired levels of CO2 and oxygen, the results were not statistically significant to suggest an inadequate gas circulation or substantial CO2 buildup. These charts display the amount of carbon dioxide and oxygen during the inhale and the exhale, and each bar is a different mask. The dark grey bar on the very left is a conventional snorkel and the other bars are the seven full face snorkel masks that were tested comparing to that traditional snorkel. While the values did vary between snorkel designs, the values never reached levels that researchers considered could lead to a physiological problem. So that kind of disproved that theory in these mask designs at least. The next theory was a difficulty removing the mask also didn't find significant data to support this theory. Remember, these subjects had little to no experience with snorkeling masks and how tightly they wore them was actually quite comparable to a regular half mask when they were told to wear those. And the times it took to remove the mask at the end of the exercise across all the different strap designs and mask designs, they're all comparable and pretty quick. Although the researchers did note that participants quite quickly turned this into a bit of a game um, and a race instead of just casually removing the mask. They tried to do it as quickly as possible, which was kind of what the test was there for, but it still showed that subjects could remove the mask with little problem when asked. The third theory could have had some supporting data. So this theory looked into the breathing resistance, how hard you would have to inhale and exhale wearing one of these masks, which was a very similar finding to the other study that I mentioned earlier. So this graph here shows one subject breathing in and breathing out and just how hard they had to inhale to get the air. And you can probably see how that changes when some water finds its way into the mask mask and they suddenly have to inhale much harder and exhale much harder until they actually had to end the test. But other than water ingress, um, which was unintentional by the way, the researchers found one predictor or common factor to the masks that they tested that could predict poor gas flow and that was whether or not the mask could be traced back to its manufacturer. The masks from diving brands had pretty decent performance, as did one of the lowest price masks. However, two of the lowest price masks that they were testing had far higher breathing resistances, and the only similarity was that they were manufactured by brands that didn't have a dedicated website, and the registered trademarks for that particular brand seemed to just be residential home addresses. The mask appeared to be the only item that that brand manufactured, and there was very little accountability for those masks. Those were the masks that had very high work of breathing scores. The researchers even went to the extent to disassemble each mask and 3D print each valve to test each valve's addition to the work of breathing on the inhale and the exhale, as well as the size of the restrictions to see if they could trace one particular feature of full face snorkel masks that might be a cause. They couldn't test the valves reliably in situ inside of each mask because they were all slightly different shapes and it's just an awkward shape. So they 
3D printed each valve in a one-to-one -one scale, and that was the best way to te test each valve and put that into a small flange so they could test the breathing resistance and the amount of airflow. What they found was that the mushroom valves actually increased the work of the inhale, but the exhale valves had little to no resistance from subjects breathing from the exhalation side of the snorkel, which is supposed to be one of the main functions of these full face snorkel masks, that they actually separate the exhaled gas from the fresh inhaled gas, and it should all be a one-way system. And they used a very simple test to prove this theory, in this mask design, the top part of the snorkel section has three airways. The central airway part for fresh air to flow into the mask, and the two airways either side for exhaled gas to escape the mask. They taped these little pieces of paper over each of the airways and breathe through the mask normally. Now, the way that the design should work is that that central piece of paper should be the one or the only one to move on the inhale and the two either side should only move on the exhale but as you can clearly see they all pretty much move together on both the inhale and the exhale that and that internal seal on each mask had of course no adjustment or fine tuning system to ensure that the oronasal section created an effective seal to prevent exhaled gas from escaping that section of the mask so the one-way valves were just clearly not doing their job and the exhaled gas did mix with the fresh gas for inhalation. But it's still worth noting that the CO2 and O2 levels measured were actually in acceptable ranges. Another feature that they found was that masks that had exhaust valves further down the mask towards the chin instead of all the way back up at the top of the snorkel, should water find its way up to these valves inside the mask, it greatly increased the work of breathing as you saw earlier in that earlier example, because they now have to push water out through those valves when exhaling instead of just pushing gas through the valves, which of course water it's far harder to do. Overall, the results of the test scientifically were kind of inconclusive. There was no huge, aha, moments and they admit that the sample size was relatively small and the conditions were controlled but they obviously didn't want to put subjects into potentially dangerous conditions and they couldn't test every single full face snorkel mask design out there because there are just hundreds now but they did say that this study did highlight for them an issue in that there's little to no regulation over these full face snorkel masks. Some of the masks tested were made by brands that had residential properties registered under their trademark, which is a big red flag. And unlike the big named brands, they have very little accountability or even traceability should something go wrong. And while scuba breathing equipment must pass rigorous testing before it can even go to market, these snorkel masks don't. At the moment, it seems that if you can make a mask, you can sell it if it works properly or not. Another thing that they noted, which if you watch the video on Dan TV's channel, uh, which is great, it's, I'll link it up here, it's worth watching, um, where one of the researchers breaks down the study and findings as well as answers some viewers' questions at the time, is that these full face masks are targeted at nervous first time snorkelers who don't like water around their face, and that can also be an important factor when they're used in the ocean. The target users realistically have little experience in the water and how to snorkel safely, so that could skew results. So the main takeaways from this study is that some full face snorkel masks are actually quite comparable to traditional snorkels, but to maximize your snorkeling safety, if you want to use one of these masks, it's very important that you check and do your research on that particular mask model that you're thinking about buying. And if you can't find much information about the brand, then steer clear. And we should really be asking for regulation and performance requirements before these masks can even go to market. There's going to be links to this particular study down in the description below so you can read it and see all the, uh, the data and stuff. And a, a great live video, as I mentioned earlier, breakdown by one of the researchers on Dan's channel. 
it's well worth following them over there on the uh, the Dan channel or the Dan TV channel, I think they call it, uh, for more studies like this covering a range of subjects. And of course, follow us here on Scuba Diver Magazine channel for more scuba diving content and consider becoming a channel member for some awesome perks. Then head over to our website because we have a bunch of cool articles on for the traveling diver uh, about new dive gear, tips and advice, all that good stuff. And of course, our actual magazine, as well as information about our dive show next year year. That's it for this week. Thank you so very much for watching everybody and of course, safe diving.